giving and receiving, but ye only. <clears throat> For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desired a gift, but I desired fruit that, it, that may abound to your account. Verse 18, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Ephroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice accountable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ, by Christ Jesus. Let's pray, then we'll get started this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to come and to open your word once again and try to learn some truths or principles, or Father, be reminded of some great principles that will help us in this journey called the Christian life. Father, we come before you thanking you most of all for our salvation. We thank you for a great church that we can come and on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, we can leave the cares of this world at the door and enter into your house. And Father, have a man of God get up and preach and try to help us to strive to be better Christians. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our church. We thank you for our deacons and our leaders. Lord, we ask that you would bless them, please. We come before you this morning, Lord, with needs. Father, we think of the many that um, raised their hands and said they had unspoken prayer requests. Father, you know what is on the hearts and in the minds of, of our dear class members. Father, we ask that you would work your will and your way in each individual life. Father, I know in my life I have some things that only you know about that we're asking for. Lord, we ask that you would work your will and your way there. We think of the ones who are sick, Lord. We think of Albert and Jason. We think of Brother Ron. We think of Rita. We think of um, Emily and Jerry. Father, we think of Andrew. We think of Kristen. We think of Angela, Lord, all that are um, fighting different battles that they have physically. We ask, Lord, that you would work your will and your way in each individual life, Father. We ask that they'd see your hand in this the circumstances that they find themselves in. We think of Brother Paul this morning. We ask that you touch his body and heal him. We think of um, Andrew as he's having a, a procedure this week. Lord, we ask that you would help the doctors to diagnose exactly what is wrong so they'll be able to help him. Father, we'd ask you to do that, please. Lord, we're asking this morning also that you would continue to be with Brother Drexel. We ask, Lord, that you'll um, we thank you the procedure went well. We ask, Lord, that you'll bring comfort to his body, please. We'd ask you to do that, please. And, Father, we, we just ask that you would help me this morning as I teach. I ask, Father, that you give me very clear thoughts. I ask, Lord, that you would um, help me to relay um, some great truths that is found in this passage of Scripture, Lord. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to fill me with thy power. I yield myself to you the best way I know how, Father, because I know that the only eternal um, difference that's going to be made in the next few minutes is it will come from you. We sure do thank you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Probably one of the most powerful verses or most encouraging verses to me is found in verse number 13 of Philippians chapter 4. The Bible says this, I can do all things through Christ." which strengtheneth me. Now, I've learned that as a little boy. When I was, in, when I was uh, little, seventh, eighth, eight years old, when we ever had, we'd go to camp every um, summer. We'd, uh, part of the program was for us to memorize as much scripture and get points for our team. So one of the, every year, one of the verses that was always on the sheet, which was always a good 25 points for your team, because I always tried to, I wasn't very good at memorizing, but I could pick the really easy ones. And that was an easy one. Boy, that's real hard. I can do all things through Christ with strength with me, Philippians 4.13. And I'd get my, my uh, I could learn that in like two, two minutes, because I'd say it to myself really quick, and then I'd go t to my cabin, and usually it was Brother John Holtzclaw. Y'all call him John, Brother Jack, is he'd sit there and he'd listen. He'd write it out for me, and that I got my 25 points. But truthfully, this verse did not become real to me until I was 18. Now, remember, 
for 11 years or 12 years every year because the Truthfully, the memory verses never change. So for, for every summer in July, the last two, part, two weeks of July, um, I would go and I would say this verse, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things every year, 25 points. When I was 18, probably I would say January, February, when the Lord was really working with me about um, working with young people, and really serving the Lord with my life. You know, being a, high, a senior in high school, the last semester, you have a lot of things going through your mind because you're fixing to step out of high school and you're, you've got to try to figure out what you're going to do with your life. And the Lord was really working on my heart and my life. And uh, you met him at our uh, adoption party. Uh, Mr. Akins has a son. His name is Gerald. And I was 18, I was, somehow I became the quote unquote leader of the youth department because I would go visiting and soul winning and I was there and I was trying to live right. And everybody, apparently, I did not know it at the time, but apparently everybody was watching me. And uh, Mr. Aikens walk up to me and he goes, are you real? Which is a, kind of took me by surprise. Um, yeah, I'm flesh and blood. I am real. He goes, no, this are, is this uh, is this a game to you, or are you really trying to live for the Lord? Because I have a son, and I have a lot of people who are watching you to see what you're doing. Now, talk about pressure. That's a little pressure for an 18 year old. I said, well, I, I don't know. I'm genuine as best I can. I'm doing my best to live for the Lord. It's really, in all honesty, it's been the biggest desire of my heart since I was a teenager. I failed many times, but I've really had the desire to serve the Lord with my life. And uh, so I went, and at the time I was, um, to help pay my school bill, I was working at nights, cleaning the bathrooms and cafeteria. And it was probably 11 o'clock at night, Wednesday night. I'll never forget it. In the, uh, New Testament Baptist Church, where I was going to school, I was in the cafeteria vacuuming, getting cleaned up for um, the next day. And I was thinking to myself, I can't do this. All these people are watching me. I know me, and I know I'm going to fail. I know me. I know that if I get tempted, I may fall into temptation. And it, it wasn't an audible voice. But what, one verse came across my mind, and it's this verse here. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Do you realize what a great promise that is? That there is nothing that we cannot accomplish through Christ, because he is the one who's going to give us the strength to get through the difficult times that we have, or give us the strength to get through to do something great and mighty for him. I can't do it by myself. You know, I don't think I have a whole lot of talent, honestly. I don't have a whole lot of ability. God's given me a little bit of ability, and I don't understand it, to work with teenagers. The kids on Wednesday night that I get the opportunity to teach, it really shouldn't work, honestly. I'm 47. They're kids. They look at me sometimes like, dude, you just came out of Planet Zorgo. Um, but it works. I relate to them, and I don't know why. You know what it is? Because God's given me the ability for somehow to relate and be patient with them. That comes from God. For me to have an impact in their life is not going to be because of my talents. It's not going to be because of my ability. It's going to be because God is willing to empower me to do something mighty in their life. If I try to do what I do in the flesh, I am going to fail. 
if I try to do what I do in the flesh, I am not going to have an eternal, an eternal difference. You know, I noticed something when we're reading that. Look at verse number, um, flip over to verse number, uh, let's see, verse number 17. Look what, look what Paul said to this church here in Philippi. He says, not because I desire the gift, but I desire fruit that, re that may remain to your account. He was not talking about a physical fruit. He was saying, You've, here you have helped me and you have met my needs and now I am serving the Lord and I'm praying that the, the fruit of my ministry will remain at your account and you will, re will reap the rewards and the benefits of that fruit that, that I am seeing here in my ministry. The only way Paul did that is through Christ. The power that comes through Christ. Look at, I want you to take your Bibles. I want you to go to um, the power of God. Look at this. Um, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number um, 12, please. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 12. The, unfil the unfailing power of God. Verse ch um, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 12. Real quick. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 12, the Bible says this, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heavens with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a, in a measure, and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance? Who hath directed the spirit of the, of the Lord, and being his counselor hath taught us? Who hath took, um, with whom he took counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the paths of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showing him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the the isles of, as a very little thing in Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, and the beast thereof sufficient for the burnt offerings. God is all-powerful. How, uh, have, you, have you ever tried to figure out the power of God, the omniscience, I think that's the word, how all-powerful God is? Think about this. The Bible says he took the, he took the mountains as scales, that, that he could speak this world, and just in the spoken word, he spoke this word, world into existence. And we have the opportunity to tap into that power through Christ. Here is the difference between being able to do all things through Christ and not doing all things through Christ. You your willingness to yield yourself to him. I forget the, this because it just popped in my head, Psalms, I think it's 85, Psalm 85, middle of verse 14, 15, around there, I think. Who hath limited the Holy One of Israel? For us to accomplish great things for God, we need the power of God. For me to do what I do, I need God's power. Therefore, it requires me to yield myself to him for him to fill me. We heard the last, as we were going through uh, Ephesians, when pastor was talking about um, going through Philippians, talking about how we need the power of God. How that um, be not drunk with wine were in excess, but be filled with the spirit. We need that filling and therefore it requires us to yield ourself to him so that he can do a great work in our life. The problems that we face is this. Sometimes we don't want to yield. Sometimes we don't see the opportunities 
of being of seeing God do great and mighty things in our life because we're so consumed in the circumstances that we have or we're cons so consumed in the hurts that we're going through and so concerned about life that we're living that we're not willing to say all right Lord for this work I need your power and for me to accomplish something great in my ministry or in growing children and parenting, I need your power. And for me to do that, I have got to go to you every day and I have to empty myself of my ambitions, of my desires, of my wants, of my motives. And I have to look to you and say, for me to accomplish this, I need you. And by emptying yourself to him and letting him and his power work through you as a channel and a vehicle to accomplish something great, it requires yieldedness. Um, in the last year, Linda, Linda and I have taken on a very big responsibility. Um, I want AJ to turn out right. I have high hopes for him. I have big dreams for him. God did not take that little boy from the circumstances that he was and put him into our life without a purpose and a plan. I have found out something. Parenting is hard. I have found out that he don't just listen when I want him to listen. Now, much as we laugh and we play, and we have 90, I'd say 95% of the time, it's harmony in the house. That's that 5% that we're working on. But for me to have him turn out right, yes, I realize he's going to make a decision at some point. But during these formative years, I looked at the Lord one day and I said, I don't know if I can do this because it's hard. But what's the Bible say? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So I go to the Lord and I pray and I beg him to give me the wisdom and the power that I need to help him become the purpose why he put him with us. I don't know what will happen with the baby, honestly. I don't know if it's just a season God has allowed us to have him or if it will turn into something longer than that. I do know this. I go to the Lord and I say, why we have him, I need your, I'd never dealt with a sick baby before. That's a whole different ball game. You sitting in all children's and you're looking at this little baby. That's a whole different ball game. You don't think I spent some time praying and asking God to do something in his little life? If you're willing to yield, you can see God do great things. If you're willing to yield, because his power is not short. His power is not selective. God will give you the same power if you're willing to yield as any preacher has ever stood and preached a, a, or any Sunday school teacher. If you're willing to do what is required for you to have God's power in your life, it means we've got to take some things out. God's not going to use a dirty vessel. He's got to use a clean vessel. So it's important for us to make sure that not only are we yielded, but we're also finding those areas of our lives that we're working on to try to, to, to get under control or to help get a handle on so that God can use us to a greater mighty need. I don't want this to be a job to me. Sunday morning, I don't want it to be a job. Wednesday night, I don't want to be something that I have to do. I missed Wednesday night. I hate missing. But I want God's power. Because I want to have an eternal impact, not only in their lives, but in your lives. I want you to learn. When you come on Sunday mornings, I want you to have something that you can go home with Sunday, Sunday afternoon on your way home and say, you know, here's a principle I can take and I can still apply it to my life just to help me to become a better Christian. Because we're all on this journey. We're all striving to become a better Christian. And for us to become better Christians, 
I've got to have something for God to give you to help you to become a better Christian. Do you, do you understand how, I, to me, illogical, for the most part, it is for me to teach this class? I'm 47. A lot of you are a lot older than that. A lot of you have spent, not a lot older, that wouldn't be right to say that. Um, you, have, you have a few more years than me on that. And you've been Christians longer than I have been, than I have been a Christian. But, look, God allowed me to be the teacher of this class for a purpose, by God's design. You don't think during the week I go and I ask God and say, you've got to give me something and you've got to use me so I can help each and every one in my class take that one step closer. Because that's what I want. That's what my desire is. And if I felt like I could not do that, I would be the first to resign. Because my desire is, is all of us collectively taking that next step because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me if you're willing to yield if you're willing to find those areas of your life to work on I have them I have areas I still work on I have things I still struggle with and sometimes I'm like Lord I don't know if I can get victory over this this verse comes to my mind. You can do it if you're willing. You know, and some of it is this too, at least in my case. Sometimes it's just a lack of commitment to accomplish what God has. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get lazy. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I know what I need to do. I'll give you a good example. Now, this is a stupid example, but it's a true example. I need to cut my grass. Now, it would take me exactly maybe 10 minutes total. To, the hardest thing I have to do about cutting my grass is turning the switch to turn the lawnmower on. But I haven't cut it. You know why? I'm just putting it off. How many times do we in our Christian lives do the same thing? I know I, read my, I, know I need to read my Bible, but I'll put it off. I, I know I need to spend more time in prayer, other things come in, in our lives that draw our attention away. We all have struggles. We all have things that we're working on. But whatever you want to accomplish, you can do it. Because you have a verse that you can claim a promise from a holy God that says you can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it. But I'm will, I have to be willing to yield. I have to be committed and focused. I have to be able to work on those areas of my life that I need to work on to try to shore up so that God can use a more cleaner vessel so that he can flow through me to the degree that I desire for him to flow through me so I can make an eternal difference in your life, in my children's lives, in my wife's life. Being married isn't easy. I've learned that in 18 years. I need his power to be the best husband I can be. I need his power to be the best employee I can be. And every, truthfully, in every area of my life, I've got to have his power. Because if I don't have his power, I'm not going to be able to be as successful as I can be. I can probably do a lot of things in the flesh. I'm not the great smartest in the world. I'm an average intelligence. I can do some things in the flesh. But when it's all said and done and I'm standing for Christ, the only thing that's going to be mad that will matter is what I've done for him. And for me to do and see the greatest rewards requires me to depend on him. I, uh, I sure love him. And I sure want him to be pleased with my life. And I want to do, accomplish great things 
for him. But it's only going to happen if I'm willing to yield myself. The same for you. Let's pray and we'll be done. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, what a privilege it is to stand before this, these dear people and open your word. Try to teach them a principle or remind them of a principle that is in your word, Father, that um, you've given to us. And I ask that you help me to clearly explain to the degree that everyone could understand it and apply it to their life. I don't know why you've chosen me to serve you, but I sure am glad that you did. I'm so thankful that you saved me and you've given me so much. I ask, Father, that you would help me and help all of our class to strive to be the best Christians we can be. I ask, Father, that you would help us all to yield ourselves to you in every area of our life so we could see your power work through us and see life-changing events happen, not in our lives only, but into those who are around us, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, Lord as we try to make an impact for the gospel. We ask you to be with our pastor this morning. Please use him. We'd ask you to do that. Father, we love you. We're so thankful that you love us. We ask you to be with our class, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's sing and we'll be done. Ready? Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right, we have about 16. Hours.